Good morning. Welcome to a late morning edition of Mornings with Stanley. I'm running late today. I, I could not sleep. <laughs> well, I slept. I go to sleep really easily, but I wake up and I start thinking. <laughs> and so I've been thinking <laughs> about my future, <laughs> financial future. I've been talking to a financial guy and <sighs> thinking about long-term care insurance and how much it would cost anyway so that's been on my mind and it's expensive anyway so i woke up thinking about that and then i finally got back to sleep and i didn't want to get up got up 15 minutes after the alarm went off I rode for 40 minutes, took the dogs for a walk, drank my coffee, but I, I was so tired, I kept forgetting to do some of the things. Like, I usually put the coffee on and go and um, walk the dogs, and then come back and the coffee's ready. <laughs> and I forgot to do that today, so I had to wait for the coffee. <laughs> I could have gone to the Starbucks or something, but that's so expensive. Speaking of money. <laughs> and... And I got a text from Brenda at the office and she was going to possibly be late. <laughs> so I said, great, I'm already running late myself. And and here I am. I thought, I'm just going to go on and do this because today my friends from Virginia are coming in. I think I said that they might not be, but they are. And um, just the two sisters. Or well, actually, I probably did say that because... I did such a late video yesterday. I might have said that yesterday. But anyway, we're going to meet tonight probably in Hillsboro for dinner. So I am going to go to the office, get this uploaded, and need to make a, a visit to a church member who's in a nursing home in Burleson today and maybe get most of my sermon written. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Let me get Stanley out of the room. He goes so willingly, but I think he doesn't really, I think he knows it. So I'm going to close the door on him, but he doesn't like, he just lays down on the floor usually. I can't see him, so he must be right outside the door. And Lucy, by the way, I didn't talk about Lucy. She's in the other room. But here's our reading. This is Thursday of week nine, cares of this life. And this just shows you how diet conscious I am. I talk about food a lot. I thought carbs of this life. <laughs> when I first saw this. Cares of this life. We finished yesterday on being weighed down by dissipation and drunkenness, the pursuit of pleasure through escapism. The other portion of the verse warns us against being weighed down with cares of this life. The first, through drunkenness and dissipation, attempts to escape from the cares of this life. The second, spurning the escape into dissipation and drunkenness, tries the me method of handling the cares of this life by dutifulness and self-discipline. The persons involved may be religious which holds them to duty, discipline. They are in the religious cells and not in Christ, and hence they are care-filled, weighed-down persons. They are tense, anxious, and strained. Things present are always present, absorbing time and attention and life. Note, Jesus put this being weighed down with the cares of this life in the same category as dissipation and drunkenness. It is the sin of the conscientious conscientious. What is the remedy for both of these? It's simple. In both cases, there is a consciousness of being in yourself, hence of being in time. The remedy is to step out of yourself and out of time into Christ by self-surrender. Then when you are in Christ, you are in eternal life. You are more conscious of eternal life than you are of temporal life. You have stepped out of a passing show into an eternal now. Things present are replaced by the thing present. You don't run away from the things present. You relate them as a subordinate, as subordinate to the eternal in Christ. They take their places on the margin of life. You have them in your control. They don't have you. You have them. They don't use you. You use them. They don't use you. You have separated them from the throne of your life by surrendering them to Christ. Therefore, they have no more power to separate you from Christ. In him, your values are straight. Things are things. I submit not to things, but to Christ. Makes me think of 
what I kept thinking about when I woke up this morning about worrying about my temporal life, what, how I'm going to survive if I go into a long-term care facility, hopefully in my 80s like my parents did, but we'll see. Anyway. Oh, Jesus, here's our prayer for today. Oh, Jesus, you are my su supreme value. I look into your face and I'm no longer the servant of things. I am a servant of the author of things. I can take little or much of things, for I have all of you. Blessed emancipation, glorious liberty, I thank you. Amen. And our affirmation for the day, there are two ways to be rich, one in the abundance of your possessions and the other in the fewness of your wants. Jesus is Lord.